I've had my eye on the Lumix S 18mm for a while, but can never justify buying it as it felt like quite a niche lens for my work. However, over the last six months, I have found myself increasingly attracted to shooting on wider focal lengths, and you can watch a video I made about this a couple of months ago. Recently, I was invited to the launch of the Lumix S5 2X, and during that event, they gave us access to all the L-mount lenses that they make, and I made a beeline straight to the 18mm to have a go of it, and basically, <laughs> I fell in love with it. I loved it. I recently got a couple of invoices paid and then made a super heat of the moment decision to drop a load of cash on purchasing this lens. So I bought it myself. So no one's asked me to make a video about this. I'm doing it off my own back. So today I'm going to give you my thoughts on this lens and show you a ton of sample footage because I also took it on my recent holiday to Italy. We went to a Stoonie. It was amazing. So stick around. <laughs> I think generally they're kind of two cases for using wider focal lengths. The first is as a more general wide angle perspective for documentary work, particularly if you're following somewhere around or out and about or putting your camera on a gimbal. And I think this lens is great for that. It's also a great lens for establishing shots. Uh, you know, wider focal lengths are great for capturing wide perspectives, buildings, externals, cityscapes, horizons, all that sort of thing. But the other is also using wider focal lengths stylistically when shooting people. And I think, you know, this is quite a trend these days and a lot of commercial cinematography and I think this is because there's something much more dramatic and immediate about shooting people handheld on a wide angle lens this is often because to shoot people and to isolate them you need to get the camera a lot closer to your subject and then this obviously creates much more intense sense of intimacy and drama over you know something like a similar framing with uh, a 50mm lens where you're going to be much further back with the camera and the audience, you know, can feel that, they can tell that. So shooting with this 18mm was just loads of fun and the best bit was that it was also quite challenging, you know, it was pushing me to figure out what I could do and what I could get with this lens because it's not a focal length I have much experience with. So using this lens at the launch event, it really forced me to be a lot bolder and a bit more aggressive with my camera. It forced me to get up front to the things I was filming. Had I gone for a 50mm, I would have played it a lot more safe and stood much further back. And I think the shots would have just been a lot more boring and vanilla compared to what I was able to get. This lens encourages movement, movement of your camera. It almost feels like the camera becomes an extension of yourself because camera movements dramatically alter the way that the frame looks with a lens like this. So even small movements can have quite dramatic effects on the way that your subject looks in the frame. Thanks to the small distance of this particular lens, then you can also get really up close and personal, which I love, and makes this a really useful, versatile lens, especially if you're interested in filming people. I put out a review of the 50mm Lumix S lens, I think towards the end of last year. Link in the description, check it out. The 18mm does match really well with this lens optically. Uh, it has a very pleasing quality to it. I'm not someone who loves modern glass, but it is a modern lens, but it never feels overly sharp or clinical. There is a slight sort of creaminess and an organic feel that they have to them. And the fall off into the focus area is quite smooth and organic. I don't know, it's just, it doesn't feel like using the Sigma lenses, which in my opinion are lovely, but they're just a little bit too clinical and a bit one-dimensional for me. So I think for the price, I think these lenses deliver superb image quality and a really premium looking image, I think as well. And there's no sort of chromatic aberration or other distortion to worry about uh, across the set of these lenses. Of course, if you want, you can dial in a bit more grunge in post. That's generally what I do. But I think, you know, these lenses are a nice middle ground, a nice balance between having some character, but maintaining, you know, a modern neutral look. The fact that all these lenses are a consistent f1.8 makes them really versatile. I think having a fast wide angle lens is really interesting because it helps you separate your subject from the background and allows you to get some really interesting shots when you move in close and get up close and personal with your subjects. Obviously in lower light situations having something of you know f1.8 is really useful. 
The other great thing about this lens is that there's no distortion in terms of the sides. Everything appears very sort of normal and straight, which, you know, is sometimes an issue on wide angle lenses. One issue I did encounter was some vignetting when I was using my uh, variable ND filter, and it was even worse when I was snacking filters. Honestly, I think this is probably more to do with my setup than a fault in the lens itself. So I think if you are gonna be using screw on filters with this lens, just bear that in mind and make sure you're using something that's fairly low profile and just check what the lens is doing if you are stacking filters. One of the things that I love about the Lumix L mount lenses is their form factor and the consistency across the set. They have the same filter thread across all the lenses. The focus rings are all in the same position and the same size. I obviously took this thing to Italy and, you know, walking around all day with this thing on my camera was an absolute doddle. I shot with an absolute minimum setup. I also brought my 50 millimeter with me, but across the whole week, I think I barely touched that lens. I loved the 18 millimeter so much that I was just running around with this thing stuck on my camera for pretty much the whole week. And because it was just so small and nimble, it was just really easy to pull it out whenever I wanted and experiment with it and have fun. And I think that's really important. The easier it is to get it out and get it in front of you and start taking shots, the more you're gonna use it. So with this lens, and generally with the whole Lumix, lenses um, I really love them and I think they just pair perfectly with these cameras as a native Panasonic Lumix lens they all work really well with the internal uh, stabilization or IBIS system of these cameras my thoughts on whether you should actually use the IBIS on this particular lens on this focal length is kind of mixed on a lot of shots I did notice that I got quite a bit of warping and distortion which I think is common when shooting on IBIS at focal lengths you know below around 30 millimeters I think you need to be careful using IBIS on on those focal lengths so I do think in many circumstances you might be better off actually just disabling the IBIS when shooting handheld with this lens I think one of the benefit of wider focal lengths is that the a little more forgiving on handheld work because they just don't amplify your sort of handheld movements and wobbles as much. I think the only issue here is that this lens and the camera are incredibly lightweight. So that introduces its own issues uh, that you get sort of micro jitters and it's very difficult to sort of keep the camera as stable as you would with a heavier cinema camera. So I would recommend disabling the IBIS, but I would also, if you were doing that, recommend also just bulking the camera up a little bit, adding a cage, a monitor, top handle, just adding a bit more weight because I think that will reduce any issue from micro jitters and just help you get some nice handheld dynamic movement with this lens. Because no matter how good an IBIS system is, it's always going to give you a cleaner image when you're turning it off. It's always going to be at risk of introducing you know, some distortion and a bit of weird wobble. So if you can get away with not using the IBIS, I'd recommend that. So the only other issue with the IBIS is if you are getting some vignetting when you're using some filters, that vignetting is gonna shift around in your frame a little bit because the sensor is moving around relative to the lens and that's just gonna look really distracting and it's not gonna look great. So that is another thing to bear in mind. <laughs> I'm just getting some fun shots. I think this lens is absolutely perfect for gimbal work and I actually ended up buying the DJI RS3 Mini Pro especially to go with this lens combined with the excellent autofocus on the Lumix S5 2X or just the standard Mark II I was kind of blown away by how slick and seamless this setup was and everything just sort of clicked. The weight of the lens and the camera is a sort of perfect fit on this tiny little RS3 Mini Pro. If you are doing gimbal work with these cameras, I really recommend pairing it with this lens and also with a gimbal like the Mini because they just work really well together. So I think on shoots where I need gimbal photography, this will be my go-to setup. The Lumix S5 2X, the 18mm and the RS3 uh, Mini Pro. And I'll just set the camera up on this gimbal in the morning with this lens and I'll just leave it there for the day and use the Komodo as my A-cam. I put off buying this lens for ages and I guess initially it just felt like a bit of a frivolous purchase but now I've been experimenting with this lens and using it with the autofocus on the S5 2X I think it's 
probably my favorite lens to take out with me. And I think it's just gonna live on this camera. I think if you're a vlogger, it's also a great focal length to use. If you're, you know, holding the camera out in front of you, or if you've got it positioned near you uh, on a table or on a mini tripod or something like that, it's a fantastically versatile lens. And it just surprised me how much I love it and how much it's just stayed on my camera since I bought it. So if you can afford it, I really do recommend purchasing this lens. And if you do, please, please use my affiliate links in the description down below. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but I do get a small commission and it really helps support this channel. I'd love to know which of the Lumix S lenses you've all been using and also please give me a recommendation of which lens you think I should pick up next because now I've got these two I'm really keen to build out the set uh, to use with my Lumix S5 2X. Uh, thanks for watching please consider subscribing to the channel if you've not please like the video if you enjoyed it. I'm Ed Prosser and until next time see ya!